Yo, what's up, everybody? Hey, it's uh, Jason, and uh, we're getting ready uh, to stream here. We're going to build a new Panzer today that uh, we're going to put up on the website for sale when we're done. So hopefully uh, you guys can hear the music, hear me okay, and uh, we'll get going here in a moment. All right, what's going on, everybody? Hey, it's Jason, and today we're going to do a live stream. We're going to build this Panzer Fight Stick out, and I want to show a couple things off before we go ahead and get started. Merry Christmas to everybody. Uh, if it's still that time for you, it's done and over for me. We're just back at work doing uh, the normal grind here in Japan. So for those of you in the UK, and I think even in Canada, happy Boxing Day, because I think it's still a holiday for y'all. So uh, give me a thumbs up or something in the chat, and make sure that the... The uh, mic volume's okay, and the music in the background can be heard, and it's not too overpowering. And if it is, we'll just make a couple changes, and we'll get on with our day. I do have a new mic that I picked up uh, recently. This is the first time using it, so I hope it sounds all right. If not, well, I'll have to relocate it and maybe move it so it uh, picks up less from my server rack and more from me. But uh, we'll see. We'll find out. So uh, I'm going to let you guys go ahead and uh, let me know in the chat. And while uh, you guys do that, I'm going to show off a couple things. Here uh, you can see this uh, this nice box with this sweet yellow bands. I got a, a banding machine uh, for Christmas. Well, for Christmas, meaning I bought it for the business, and it just happened to arrive on Christmas Day because they don't celebrate Christmas here. And uh, yeah, so it's really cool. You put the box on the machine, you hit a little button, it throws a strap around it and seals it nice and tight, uh, just to provide a little extra uh, security when these go in their outer shells to stay shut. So it seems like a shame to cut this open 
because uh, um, I just banded it, but I was testing it out. Uh, okay, so the box on the left. Normally, I put a bunch of ads there. Unfortunately, I don't have any ads that I want to put up right now. So nothing's going to be shown there. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, yeah. Oh, before I go cutting into this, one other thing I'm going to show off is check this out. Uh, hopefully, it gets into focus there. Uh, got custom boxes made with my logo on it so that I can check off what kind of case is inside uh, and then write down the color. Pretty sweet if I do say so myself. I'm very excited about that. And these boxes are nice and thick, so hopefully the double packing method that I've adopted will uh, keep <coughs> excuse me, everything nice and safe during shipments. For those of you who've been following me on Twitter, you know uh, the last couple days and even the last couple weeks uh, things have uh, been a little difficult for me. Uh, a lot of people claiming things have been stolen off their porches. A lot of people claiming uh, damages. A lot of people claiming stuff hasn't arrived, uh, despite tracking saying it's arrived. So, unfortunately, we've had to kind of go off to the deep end here, and now we're going to have to start requiring signatures on everything uh, for pickup, just to avoid the problems of... Um, of things disappearing or people saying they didn't get things when in fact they probably did they're just trying to get a little extra from me or from anyone really uh, all of the cases so far that uh, people have said not cases necessarily but packages that people have said have been stolen I've recommended all of them contact their local police officers as well as contact the local post office so that they can put uh, put in police reports and hopefully catch the people who are out there swiping packages off people's porches. I don't understand why people do that. It's kind of a shitty thing to do, but uh, unfortunately it's happening. And this is the best way to report it so that there, if there is a uh, epidemic in your area, the police are onto it and they can start looking out for it. Uh, and in the cases where uh, maybe it's just someone trying to get something for free, well, that kind of stinks, but uh, you know, it'll eventually catch up to you. So, anyways, uh, that's one thing I do like about living in Japan, even though it's kind of a nuisance, is everything requires it to be physically handed to you, so you can't, they won't just leave anything on your porch. You have to sign for it, they have to physically hand it to someone, and a lot of times they watch me walk back into my house with a package, so they 100% know it's not just getting walked off with. So that's kind of nice. I'm going to miss that when I go back to the U.S. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and open this up. You can see we're going to start with a... Uh, this looked black on the, uh, the screen, but uh, I can assure you this is a graphite color. And uh, I'm gonna just kind of show you guys a couple things real quick. Um, this is the uh, this is from the banding machine. <laughs> it uh, puts so much pressure on the box, it actually crushed it a little bit. But uh, if you notice, it happens to be right where these nice uh, styrofoam blocks are where the uh, go in the cor corners to protect the case. Uh, these new boxes, as you can see here, they're nice and thick. I think that's, uh, well, I guess we can measure it out. I think it's like six millimeters or something like that. They're super thick. They're like double corrugated. Yeah, they're just like, s yeah, six millimeters thick. That's awesome. Super sweet, super sweet. All right, so we'll set that aside and maybe I'll get to reuse it. Um, okay, so the theme of this build. What is the theme of this build? Well, we're going to kind of pull out all the stops on this, and we're going to use a number of cool things that uh, we've offered in the shop. Uh, some more recently than others, um, and some that we've always had. Obviously, we're going to put the Brook Universal Fight Board in this. You just can't go wrong with that. Uh, I do have some of these Brook wireless boards. We're going to start carrying these here very soon. Um, i got to get a couple things finished before I do it. Uh, more importantly, I'll show you guys this. Look at that. That is the um, antenna mounting solution I came up with so that uh, you don't have to drill into your case. Uh, this replaces a 24 millimeter button. It's made out of metal. It's anodized black, so you can assume that it's made out of aluminum. It's got a nice metallic nut as well, so this is gonna last you a very, very long time. And uh, you'll see it fits kind of tight, but it fit, it still fits and it, it's gonna be great on these cases. It'll take the place of like an L3 or an R3 button, um, so you don't have to do anything crazy with it. But uh, yeah, it'll just kind of 
sit it in like this, like that, and voila, it's in place. And the antenna sticks out the back, so you're not worrying about uh, you're not worrying about uh, the steel attenuating the circuit, and you're not worried about some plastic piece uh, breaking. So I'm very excited about that. They fit in there very, very nice, um, and then it'll screw on from the back. Um, so yeah, the uh, that's coming very soon. Again, uh, it'll just kind of sit in here and then reach over. You have to do some little craziness because this antenna is pretty short, but uh, it'll it'll fit and work great. So I'm very excited about that. Um, we're gonna offer these in a bunch of different colors. Uh, we just got to get them all finished and made. Uh, today was kind of like uh, let's catch up on all the prototypes we've had in the works for the last couple months. Day uh, since I didn't have to work. Uh, in any case, uh, what are we going to do for artwork on this? Well, I'm very excited. I've got some printed plexi here. We're going to do with a uh, Street Fighter V Vulex cabinet themed uh, printed plexi overlay. Uh, yeah. Ideally, I'd put this on a black case or an orange case, but I'm going to go with this graphite case because uh, I don't actually have any black cases. I'm waiting on some more to uh, be finished up. And uh, I think that my next run of this particular artwork, I'm going to get rid of the uh, noise. Uh, I specifically put some noise on it to give it like a gold color. But I was in Tokyo um, this weekend, actually, and my wife said, Hey, Facebook is telling me we need to go check out this place in Akihabara for beers. And I was like, Okay, well, we'll go play some games while we're there. Sweet. And um, I got a better look up close of the Street Fighter V cabs, and it's more of an orange color. It's not necessarily gold. It could have just been dark too, but uh, I think I'm going to change this up and do some that are just like a an orange with the light yellow instead of like this goldish color. But I still think it came out nice. I've got a couple extra I may throw up on the site uh, for sale too um, at a discount. And uh, the reason I say a discount is because like right around here, some of the white, it's not as thick as I'd want it, so it's got a little bit of a, a little bit of a, not discoloration, but it's just not perfect. So yeah, we'll probably throw those up on sale. All right, so let's set the artwork aside. And then uh, buttons, if you guys read the stream title, you know we are going to go with Sam Duxa's um, Speed Silver Cherry MX powered switches. I'm very excited. I love these buttons. They just feel good, they sound good. Uh, they respond real well. They did a great job with these buttons. Um, and I, I maintain they're probably one of the best mechanical buttons I've seen. Um, for the arcade world in the fighting game community. So I'm super excited about that. We're gonna put that in. Uh, on the bottom, I'm gonna throw stuff all over my room, but on the bottom, we are definitely gonna put one of our pads. Yep, it's gonna be good. So uh, no feet, we're gonna go straight with the pad. Very excited about that. And naturally we're gonna put the pro cable and the pro tape. Pro cable connector on it for the most bang for your buck. And then uh, last but not least, we're going to dress up our uh, our Sandwatch ALF with one of my uh, black aluminum uh, shafts. And we're going to replace the shaft with this. It's uh, These are nice because if you look compared to like a regular shaft, uh, hopefully you guys can see it okay, they are thicker. It looks like the shaft has the shaft cover built into it, which is pretty sweet. But there's no shaft cover, it's just one nice solid chunk of aluminum that's been machined out for the JLF. So we're going to use that as well. Um, okay, so I guess we should go ahead and get started here. Uh, first thing I like to do with all of these builds is just go ahead and put the bottom pad on. Because uh, might as well while we're here. You don't want to do it with all the, uh, the stuff installed on the inside, right? So this is pretty straightforward. All you got to do is just kind of peel off the back and then line it up. Uh, and you'll be fine. Uh, the adhesive is pressure sensitive, so you, you get a little bit of a slop uh, when you're doing this, but it's probably just better to try and line it up the first time as best you can and get it in place. That looks pretty good, actually. Oh, yeah, look at that. And then, uh, yeah, it's pretty easy. Boom. All right. Cool. So now we'll go ahead and take the uh, top from the uh, bottom off and uh, we'll set the, the bottom off to uh, the side just because we don't need it right now. There we go. I 
I actually really considered just uh, playing music during the stream and just getting work because every time I build and try and chat at the same time, these always take so long <laughs> to finish up. Those of uh, you who haven't been following super close on Twitter, I'll forgive you. But uh, we do have a Discord that we started up. I uh, figured all the cool kids were doing it. Uh, uh, Rageous, he's recommend I start one up for a while, and I just, I just hadn't done it. And again, finding some free time here and there over the holidays, I managed to set one up. So I'd encourage you guys to jump over there and uh, join our Discord. And you can chat with us uh, in real time. Got a couple channels set up. Uh, Panzer Fight Stick channel, a custom panels channel, a tech channel, and uh, just a discussion type general general thing set up. Uh, so I'd encourage you guys to go over there and check that out. One of the things I want to do in 2020 is I I got to do something about my office. It's uh, the whole living situation in Japan has really uh, tested my my ability to work in tiny places and uh, kind of or keep myself organized. Unfortunately, I do neither of those things very well, not at least in pro uh, process at least. So it's always fun to like start a project like, okay, now I got to clean up before I can start my next project. Otherwise, I'm stepping on things and things are just getting in the way. So for the like 25, 30 minutes prior to starting up the stream, I was running around my office, you know, a whole like 15 feet of running total, uh, trying to move things and get things cleaned up a little bit so that they weren't on my mind while I was working. And uh, I succeeded a little bit, but uh, now that everything in my shop is here at my house, uh, here in Japan, we've got things kind of all over the place. That whole closet is full of stuff. My front entryway is full of stuff. Uh, one of my rooms upstairs has like seven shelves full of stuff. Um, so a lot, a lot of stuff going on. And uh, I tried to rent a workspace. I found a number of them that were actually really close and very affordable. Uh, and unfortunately, because of the the reason I'm in Japan, um, under the uh, the status of forces of agreement with the uh, United States military and the Japanese government, um, it's it's harder to rent things that aren't apartments and stuff. Uh, and unfortunately, there's a lot of like requirements you need documents and guarantors and stuff like that, and things I haven't been able to uh, navigate through yet. So I think the last year I'm here, I'm just going to have to suffer through and uh, either. Like, take some of my streaming setup down, move it in, in my living room somewhere, I don't know, or uh, or something, just to get some more shelving and packing area, because it's it's getting a little difficult uh, to, you know, just stay sane. <sighs> All right. Okay. Now, so one, uh, one thing that we have to con be concerned with when we're building uh, a Panzer that uses screw-in buttons you gotta pull the buttons in before you put the easy build board and all that stuff. But even before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and populate the entire front area because it's just much easier to work when there's not a lot of stuff in the way. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, I'm gonna grab my pro cable here and then toss it on the floor instead of a trash can because I don't have room for a trash can in here. All right. <clears throat> get all this stuff separated uh, okay yeah so this is definitely gonna be a Street Fighter 5 themed uh, build as you can or should have been able to figure out from the artwork and the color of buttons and stuff like that uh, so thanks for asking that yes that's what we're gonna do <clears throat> and I am multicasting this to both uh, Twitch and YouTube I think also to Facebook so uh, I'm, I'm looking over on the chat just to make sure I'm catching everyone's questions. So uh, if you guys have anything, you know, feel free to throw it in there. And uh, obviously I'll try and answer it when, uh, when I notice it. So I don't know about you guys, but uh, I had a pretty decent Christmas. I had Coco's Curry, no uh, no ham or turkey or anything like that, um, and uh, just kind of relaxed around the house. I did uh, manage to go out and uh, buy some stuff yesterday, just, you know, 
random necessity type things. And like I said, I got my banding machine, so I got to play with that a little bit. Um, got to play with it some more today when I got the correct size of banding material, uh, which was nice. Um, but uh, yeah, my wife kind of convinced me to stay in and just watch Christmas movies, which I absolutely hate. Um, but uh, it was nice not having to worry about it. And today she's back at work. I'm still on some sort of quasi-holiday routine with my job, which means I only have to go in when people call me in or when I have to muster, which is tomorrow, which means I'm probably going to be very busy tomorrow, actually. So today just seemed like a great day to stream because I actually got all my orders packed up last night. I worked on Christmas a little bit. And uh, um, then uh, I knew the post office was probably going to be a madhouse today, and of course it was. So, uh, yeah, we got that done and went out and mailed a bunch of stuff today and then uh, grabbed some lunch, had it with the wife while she was at work, and then uh, came home and here we are. So, yeah, pretty exciting. <clears throat> All right, so what I'm doing is I'm just getting the pro cable set up right now, um, pulling it in place, hand tightening it, making sure that uh, the lock washer is engaged. And uh, yeah, it is. The one thing a lot of people miss and uh, ends up kind of biting them in the rear end is the lock washer has to engage, the, the split should engage with metal. Uh, we key these so that you can fit the fat cable <laughs> through it because the USB type, uh, type B plug, it's too big for the same size opening that the Pro Cable connector is, so it won't fit. That's why we had to make the plate a two-piece design. And uh, um, a lot of people will put this on and they're not making sure that the split on the lock washer is lined up with the metal It'll end up being part on the key so it won't actually grip and make a lock and it comes loose So uh, there you go. There's a little tip for you for the day All right, let's go ahead and feed this guy through here Get this lined up got a number of things that I'm uh, I'm releasing uh, here soon Merlin what's going on how are you doing um, so as you guys know the aluminum Panzer uh, we did a number of them we sold a number which was eh, moderately successful but uh, I think a lot of people didn't like that there was no easy build with it um, and uh, Vulix it's a very divisive just yeah divisive layout either you love it or you hate it and when you hate it man do you hate it uh, I think a lot of people are very happy with the Sega Player 2 layout that the Panzer has and um, that's why uh, it's just sells so well um, I think what we're gonna do in 2020 is we're gonna make an aluminum version of the 3i that uses the easy build and everything just like uh, the regular one does uh, it'll just be lighter weight. Uh, there may be a little bit of difference. I might not put the universal mount in it because, you know, these things, you know, they're not heavy, but it's just another piece that you have to buy. It adds a little bit of weight. Um, so maybe we'll just integrate it into the top panel. I'm not sure. Um, so, but we are going to do that uh, just to give people who want a very lightweight uh, Panzer uh, that uses a uh, standard lever. Uh, options um, and then also I've been working a lot on a very small fight stick case uh, for a while and uh, I'm debating on whether I'm gonna release that too because I also have the predecessor or the excuse me the successor not the predecessor of the Panzer 3 to uh, release and it's gonna be like nothing you've seen uh, not anything like that you've seen from me before uh, and I'm very excited about that because it's gonna be um, it's going to be different. Uh, and I think that, uh, I'm not going to say it's going to be game changing. Nothing that anyone in the stick market does right now is game changing until someone comes up with something that just plugs in your brain and does what you say, you know, based on your thoughts. Um, everything seems to be just kind of a rehashing of something else. So, uh, but I think my approach to the new, the new Panzer is going to be, uh, it's either going to be really, really loved or really, really hated. So I guess we'll see. Um, I think it's going to be liked. So I'm very excited about it. 
Uh, anyways, all right, so what I'm doing now is I'm just going ahead and throwing the uh, universal lever uh, mount on right now. Throw the plate on, then I followed up with uh, uh, some flat washers, followed up by some lock washers. <clears throat> These are all number 632s, nothing uh, special here. <sighs> Let's see, and then uh, we're going to follow it up with uh, the number six nuts. Yeah, so I see some questions about the Mini. Yeah. Uh, again, it's just, uh, you know, people have been asking for, you know, not a lot of people. Let me, let me, uh-oh, now oh, there it is. Let me, let me be clear. I'm not getting thousands of requests every day for a little tiny Panzer, but I'm getting enough that it would make sense to maybe, you know, at least investigate putting one in. And when I do it, I'm, I'm talking seriously little. I'm gonna use 24 millimeter buttons on everything. It's gonna be a little guy. It's gonna be awesome. Very awesome. Uh, yes, I do know that I did not put a lock washer or nut on here. It's because I gotta grab another, my other hardware pack. Uh, these little nut drivers are freaking fantastic. Uh, every toolbox should have one. Toss that on the floor. Um, yeah. So let's see. What else are we going to think about doing in 2020? Well, there's going to be some other things I want to do. Like, I don't really like uh, all these little plastic bags that uh, all my little hardware kits come in. So uh, it's it was convenient. And it is convenient. It's very inexpensive. But uh, I think I can do something a little bit better. Uh, so I'm investigating some changes to that. Um, and one of the things I'm going to probably be doing in the next couple of days, I'm probably going to be reworking the entire way the uh, build a Panzer thing works out. Uh, I've noticed that a lot of people find it confusing that you have to put a kit in the cart, then you have to put the assembly service in the cart. The assembly service doesn't have all the crown buttons, it doesn't have, you know, it's a bunch of stuff. So I think I'm going to try and work out a better way to do that. Um, and I think I've man I think in my head I know how I'm going to do it, but, uh, I gotta just sit down and spend a couple hours on the computer, you know, clacking away and doing that. So hopefully we'll do that here shortly too. <sighs> Trying to drink less soda. So I picked up uh, some Simply Limeade and some Simply Lemonade and I mixed the two. Uh, I love it. <clears throat> I don't know that it's any healthier for me, but I don't get the jitters as much, so that's good. Uh, okay, so we got this set up. Now uh, what we're going to want to do is grab our cable pack here. This is another one of those things that I'd really like to figure out a better way to do, but I haven't, I haven't really figured it out, and I don't want to like change everything to make everything super expensive because uh, that would be stupid. But... With as much plastic as I think we're all throwing away on a daily basis, if we can do something a little bit more recyclable and be a little bit more conscious of the environment, uh, that would be better. So, uh, all right, cool. I think I lived in California too long, so or too long, so uh, it rubbed off on me. <clears throat> okay, so all right, we're not. We're gonna need that one and this one. Alright, want that, and this, alright cool, so go ahead and set the rest of this off to the side, and we're going to go ahead and just set up our, our uh, lock switches and stuff like that. Alright, and we're not cheaping out. We're even going to use the 24mm uh, Sam Duxes for the front. 
Uh, you could use just some uh, Sanwas or Samitsus or whatever, but I figured that uh, since we're putting the, the crowns up top, we should put the crowns in the front as well. Um, there's really not a need for the additional expense because these are not inexpensive buttons. They're pretty pricey, uh, but their quality is there, which is fantastic. And that's why they're so pricey. You know, plus you got the, the Cherry MX switches in there. I think, if I remember correctly, those are like $95 to $1.25 a piece um, here in the United States. So in Canada, they're probably like $5,000 a piece. Um, sorry, guys. But uh, yeah, there's really, this is just more of a consistency thing. Um, I wanted to put one of the Benelis levers in here. Uh, I got a stack of them. I haven't listed them on the website yet. I just, again, I've been crazy busy. Um, but, uh, um, the red, the red on the bat top was clear for those. And, um, uh, I didn't think it was going to look great with the, uh, the solid colored buttons that I wanted to use. If I was going with the translucent reds, it'll look great. But because I wanted to go with the solid reds, uh, I don't think it was going to look great. So it's all good. <clears throat> all right. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and set this up. So I always pull out the Easy Build board. Normally, I would have it installed at this point, um, so that I could uh, uh, just easily plug everything in as I was going. But because I've got the screw and buttons, I got to do this last. Uh, I'm gonna pull it out still, so that I can look at the uh, the uh, plugs here because this is L3 touchpad right three. And I always like to have this being L3 because it's on the farthest left. Um, so that's the blue and black wire. And I just wanted to confirm that. All right. So let's go ahead and plug these guys in. And then here the wire go. Here we go. Go ahead and do the same thing with the other buttons. The start selecting home. That takes care of all the front. Now, let's go ahead and set this over here. Let's go ahead and move this out of the way and let's grab our buttons and prep these. sounds great in the microphone because I'm reaching over it sorry I need to get another uh, Manfrotto extension arm and put the microphone on it like right here just out of frame and just run a really long <laughs> USB cable Yeah, going back to a comment from uh, FGC Linux. Uh, yeah, I 100% agree with you. I also like these crown buttons because um, 
uh, of the circle shape and the color options. You're absolutely right. Plus, I like that I can get them and I can get them in stock. I can get them in stock fast. Uh, I've reached out to Gamerfinger a number of times uh, asking them if I could carry their buttons in my shop because, you know, I don't get a lot of requests for them, but I, I've gotten a few. And until recently, I've purposely not carried any levers or buttons. Unfortunately, some recent events have kind of forced me to have to do that, which I'm fine to do. I'm, I'm happy to do it. Uh, I like working with Sanwa. I like working with uh, uh, Sam Duxa. Um, and uh, uh, they're all great companies that, uh, you know, very very in tune with the, the fighting game community. So I'm always happy to work with them and carry this stuff. Uh, even at the, at the expense of my personal living space. It's all good. Um, but I've all, every time I've reached out to Gamerfinger, I've, it's always kind of fell on deaf ears. So um, I don't know if they've just kind of like decided, ah, I've already got one shop in the U.S. that sells my stuff. I don't need more. If that's the case, all right, cool. Um, but it, it, is, uh, it is a little weird. So, you'd want, I figured you want to, to get it out there and, you know, let people use them. So, all right. So, now, because we do have the screw-ins, this piece has to go on first. All right, so let's get that lined up there like so. Let's grab the hardware that holds it into place. Ah, there we go. All right. Uh, have I seen the split box? Yeah, and I've already got people asking me to make them one. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't... I, I, I'm not a fan of acrylic sticks, so I think he could do his a little bit better. Uh, but I like the concept. It's interesting. Um, in practice, it's going to be... Uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, how many people want to use something like that because practicality wise there, there's a lot to it um, to have to carry around like two halves of a stick and then to have a connection cable between the two halves but um, it's all doable and uh, I think uh, I think a number of people um, have uh, thought of it and said yeah I kind of want one so I've gotten a few emails about making people one I'm not opposed to it heck if I get enough maybe I can make them cheap for everybody who knows <clears throat> uh, what don't I like about acrylic sticks uh, they just they're plastic and acrylic can break so uh, even the real thick acrylic eventually it's gonna crack and so that's why I just don't like it that's all <clears throat> plus it's uh, it's not something everyone can really work with um, weld on which is the the adhesive that kind of melts and forms a chemical bond it's uh, very good at what it does uh, but it can be a little nasty and a little caustic so yeah that's weird um, oh mr. Sujano welcome thank you for gracing us with your presence and much thanks for calling out my fight stick in your uh, recent video I appreciate that very much thank you so much uh, okay, so now we're going to go ahead and just start putting our buttons in. And I probably miscalculated how easy this was going to be with all these wires in the way. Alright, not so bad. All right, don't mind me. I'm just focusing very intently on getting these nuts on. 
All right. <sighs> okay, just two more to go, and we'll be ready. Perfect. All right, cool. So uh, here you go. Look at that. I think that's going to be pretty sweet. All right, cool. Nice. All right, so uh, now we'll flip this over and here, before we do that, let's make sure there's nothing sharp on the uh, the mod table here. We'll scratch up this plexi because, like I said, I'm going to list this for sale on my website. <clears throat> okay, all right, good. So that's that. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, put the uh, easy build in place. Always jump out the way. This is always uh, the most fun part when you do screw in buttons, you have to feed the button harnesses through the easy build. I always like to put them on before I put it in the case. It's just a little bit easier um, for me, which, oh my gosh. Feeding them through the correct holes is always, always so much fun. All right, and then you're like, why is this not going down? Oh, this wire's in the way. Oh, this wire's in the way. Oh, this, now oh, this wire's in the way. All right, there we go. Yikes, easy peasy. All right. We'll grab our little four small guys here. We'll use a screwdriver. That's weird. <clears throat> Whoops. Damn it. Don't mind the errant screw. Okay. Yeah, we'll get this tightened down here, like so. Very good. And then we can go ahead and start uh, plugging our button harnesses in. Get it there like that. Okay. All right, cool. And now we can just plug the rest of these in, like so. We will zip tie all this together, obviously, to make it look super clean. Don't worry about that. Hmm, something's making noise behind me. Uh, okay, so the logo, uh, it's uh, not like the official logo. It's just one that I like to use on Twitch and as well as for... Uh, uh, 
yeah, just some random artwork and stuff like that. My uh, the Gator Eye is still number one logo for Jason's Customs, but I've had this for about six or seven months. I think it's been a while. I just don't I don't use it a lot and I don't stream a lot. Uh, just uh, because these builds would take forever and a day if I streamed every single one. Too talkative. Um, but uh, yeah, I've I've had it for about six or seven months. We. Um, had a whole kind of Twitch thing set up from uh, an artist and uh, said, hey, this, uh, and I had the logo made by a different guy, uh, sent it over to him and said, hey, this is kind of what I want it to kind of feel like. He's like, got it. And then there you go. What time is it? It's three. Hmm. Might be out of zip ties. Well, I might be out of reasonable size zip ties. Let's see. Oh, here we go. We got a couple down here still. Good. I'm not completely out. Surprisingly, they're very expensive here. I don't know why. I can get like a thousand of them at Home Depot for like ten bucks. You can get like a hundred of them for ten bucks here. It's very weird. Um, okay, so I guess while we're here, we can get these kind of some of these wires cleaned up because we're not going to push any more back this way. Okay, so that's good for there. And we'll wait to put the joystick in uh, to finish tidying this all up, just because I'm at a, a low-level alarm of zip ties. So I normally I'd put them in, then cut some off, and then put some more in, and do that. But I don't want to. I don't want to waste zip ties today. Uh, but let's go ahead and toss this on the garbage, and let's grab our. Brain that, of course, we're going to use the Brick Universal Fight Ward. What? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't know why zip ties are so expensive. It's very weird. It's very, very odd. Okay. Let's set that down in place like so. <clears throat> Oh, you missed a good sale last month, too. They were... Everything was on sale. I think it was like 20% off everything in the store. Including the Panzer. <laughs> Go find me for zip ties. Yeah, probably. Actually, what I'll... <laughs> what I did is I, I jokingly told my dad, I said, Hey, I need you to go to Home Depot for me and buy me some zip ties. And then mail them to me. And he's like, What? I said no seriously. He's like, "What? Why do you? What? I don't. I don't understand why you just can't buy them there." And I kind of gave him the whole sob story, and he said, "Well, that's the problem with living overseas. Maybe you should come home." Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I think he's still gonna do it for me, but yeah, everything in Japan typically uh is a little bit more pricey because most things are imported which i mean they're an island we're an island nation over here so it makes sense but um uh yeah it's just it's very interesting it's very interesting uh the building service uh yeah my dad thinks he's a joker he, i like to call him a jack wagon uh he thinks he's funny <laughs> Canadian zip ties. Well, the funny thing is I can get U.S. Postal Service here, so it would cost me more to get them from you. And they'd have a premium, right? Because they're in Canadian dollars. <laughs> I think a bag there is like 10 grand. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay. So let's go ahead and get our USB plugged in like so. Get that cleaned up. There we go. Oh, get our couple extra wires. We need 
this one and this one. Um, uh, the build service, it's uh, I think it's one hundred and ten dollars. Uh, if I remember correctly, but that includes like the the Sanwa buttons and stuff too. Uh, the case kit is obviously dependent on which case you get uh, and which case kit you get, but uh, all of those details are available right on my website. So please go check it out. All right, uh, we'll get that plugged in here. Oops. There we go. And last but not least, we'll go ahead and plug the 20 pins in. <clears throat> okay, we're good. Very good. All right, cool. That looks muy bueno if i do say so myself <clears throat> oh nice i look forward to it uh, tax returns are always a good way to buy things unfortunately last year i spent so much money in taxes like my normal taxes it was crazy i ended up paying i, I could have bought a car with how much money in taxes i paid after i filed my taxes it wasn't crazy Uh, Chris, I lived in Italy for two and a half years. It was fantastic. You will enjoy yourself. Lots of good wine, lots of good food, lots of cool scenery, lots of good history. It's awesome. It's worth a the trip uh, there, so you'll be okay, I promise. Um, let's see. Uh, do I have the RJ45 connectors? Yeah, I actually have an entire RJ, uh, uh, retro kit that you can buy. Uh, unfortunately... Um, I think I ran out of, uh, uh, of Dreamcast cables. I don't have any more, and uh, they're not being made anymore. So I'm gonna have to try and find a new manufacturer for those. Uh, yeah, no retro board uh, in this. Gonna keep it. It's like I so anytime I build a stick, I have to go into the site and like create an order for myself. I think we're at like six hundred dollars in parts already for this. Uh, I don't know that, uh, obviously I'm not going to sell it for that much. Uh, there will be discount on the site as a bundle, of course. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I decided to forego the retro, uh, board, uh, for this. Uh, thank you for the compliment, Mr. Sujano. Um, I hate to say this. Uh, but I will because uh, I do owe a lot of my attention to detail to two very, very distinct entities in my life. Uh, one, believe it or not, is my mom. Uh, so when I was in the third grade, so let me, backstory, my dad, also Navy guy, uh, moved around every three years. So I'm 38, almost 39. I've moved at least 13 times in my life and by at least there's been a couple times during my career where i've moved two or three times more frequently than three years um so i've moved a lot and uh so when i was in third grade i my dad was stationed in michigan just outside of detroit i was going to school getting good grades a's you know all that good stuff like any any national honor society guy would expect and uh didn't think much of it. My dad moved, uh, got orders to uh, New Orleans, Louisiana to be a Navy recruiter in the area down there. So we moved down and turns out the school district in Louisiana was leaps and bounds better than the school district just outside of Detroit. Who would have imagined? Uh, and I was pretty far behind. So my, uh, my mom sat me down all summer uh, and the teachers are like, okay, we don't, we're not going to hold him back. I mean, he passed, but, uh, he struggled a little bit here and here and he needs to work on these things. And so she sat me down and all summer, every single day, uh, we'd sit down and do like workbooks and homework and stuff like this. And, uh, um, I'd be writing something out. If I misspelled one word, she'd take my homework 
crumple it up and throw it in the trash and make me start all from scratch. You know, I was in third grade. This is well before the time of computers. So no just like autocorrect and spell check or anything like that. But that went on all summer. If it was sloppy, throw it away, redo it. Uh, misspelling, throw it away, redo it. Too many problems in the math areas, you know, wrong answers, crumple it up, throw it away, redo it. Um, and that's where the attention to detail really kind of set in. Uh, fast forward to 2003, I get my commission in the Navy and they decide that they're gonna make me a submarine officer. And our first stop is Charleston, South Carolina, where we go to nuclear power school and learn how nuclear reactors work. Um, followed by, that's six months, followed by six months of actually operating nuclear reactors so you have experience before you go to your first submarine and do it for real underway. And the level of detail and precision required to operate a nuclear reactor under the water, away from land, with only you and your crew is unparalleled in anything I've done in my entire life. And it that kind of reinforced those early, early um, lessons from my mom about why uh, attention to detail and putting your best foot forward and taking the time really matters. And that's kind of influenced everything in my life. Um, that's why the Panzer is very simple because it's, it's, it's easy to do complex, but it's also very easy to mess it up. Um, it's very easy to give someone a shell, but when you want it to look a certain way for every single person, it requires that extra step. That's why the easy build was made. That's why all the, the harnesses were made a certain way. Um, that's why I worked with Brooke to make the board a certain way, stuff like that. Uh, so that's kind of where this all kind of, you know, started from. So, yeah, there you go. Thank you so much. Uh, my mom, not a drill instructor, but her parents were also in the Navy. Her uh, biological dad was a retired first class yeoman, uh, which is an administration guy in the Navy. And her stepdad is a retired master chief. So, and then she joined the Navy as soon as she turned 18 so she could get out of the house. So, <laughs> yes. We, we were raised in a very, not strict, but a very, um, yeah, strict household probably is, probably is right. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and yank this uh, stock shaft out of this JLF and we're gonna replace it with one of our black aluminum shafts. All right. All right, so to do that, we gotta first remove this clip, I just use a little flathead screwdriver, tuck it in there, and uh, pull it away gently using my forefinger, my pointer finger rather, forefinger, and uh, with my thumb I hold the uh, spring at bay, if you will. Okay, and then just gently let that out, and then out comes that shaft, and comes my shaft. There we go. Good. Push that down into place and grab the e-clip and put it back in its place here and to do that i'm definitely going to need a pair of needle nose pliers there we go cool and just like that we now have a fatty black shaft on our on our uh jlf all right let's see here uh, okay, so let me see. Uh, questions, questions, questions. Can you put a university flight board and a retro board in at once? Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, over here, this stick, right here, this is one of mine. It's uh, got the carbon fiber overlay. Don't mind this, I just use that to protect the shaft. Um, you'll notice, ugh, I've got the RJ45 here. This has got a Brook retro board and a universal flight board inside. They're stacked on top of each other and they work in tandem, meaning there's a USB switching function of the retro board that lets you pass the USB through it and use a common output. All right. Um, okay, uh, let's see, other questions here. How much, uh, how much, all right, so, the Brook board is the fastest board on the market. Nothing touches it. Victrix can claim they're the fastest. They're not. 
the brick board beats him every single time. Uh, I think in some cases the PS360 Plus is a little bit faster, but that's in like Xbox 360 mode and it's a fraction of a microsecond. It's not a lot. Um, so, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, other questions. Uh, sub stories reminding of. Yeah, so everyone has a story about someone talking him out of joining the military. Um, I'm not a military evangelical. Uh, I'm not one that will go out and say, you should join the Navy. It's the greatest thing that ever happened. There's been ups and downs. A hundred percent with with uh, my career, um, I would consider now being a low point of my career. Uh, I recently found out that I'm probably not going to get promoted to commander, uh, lieutenant commander is as high as I'm going to be, uh, and I'm okay with that. Um, there were some career choices I made uh, that affected my ability to get promoted beyond where I'm at now, and I'm okay with that. Uh, I've had a very enjoyable career. Um, there's been highs with my career. Uh, the Navy paid for me to go to the University of Florida. Spent three and a half years at one of the greatest universities in the state of Florida, if not the best in the state of Florida, uh, and one of the top tier universities in the United States. And I got a degree in mathematics out of it and came out debt free on the other side. Uh, and I only had to serve five years. Here I am, 16 and a half years later, uh, still enjoying life relatively. Um, had they not sent me to the University of Florida, because I originally was going to go to Penn State um, and had got accepted to go there, I would have never met my wife. Uh, had they not made the decision for me to go to nuclear power school, uh, I'd be probably would have been an aviator and gotten out of the Navy relatively soon after I got in uh, and finished my commitment. Um, because, you know, it's just typically what they do. Uh, so the Navy's made a lot of very good choices for me that I didn't recognize were good choices, but I'm kind of a one-off and I take things with stride, usually. My boss may disagree, um, but uh, I've enjoyed it and uh, I've had a lot of very good experiences um, with people, with the places I've lived, with the jobs I've done, etc. Uh, but that's not for, it's, it's not the same for everybody and uh, it either works for you or it doesn't. So in my case, it worked very, very well. So, uh, give me like two seconds, everyone. I just realized that the dust washers I have, these do not fit with a shaft cover. So I got to go upstairs. Oh, hang on. Let me check. Maybe I don't have to. Uh, I have to go grab some dust washers that fit over a shaft cover. Give me like two seconds. Yes. All right. Good. So there we go. Uh, okay. So let's go ahead and move this off to the side here like this and hang the case mostly off the, off the desk here. And let's line this up and let's put our nuts and screws in for the JLF. All right. To do so, we're going to use these little short guys, probably harder to see now that I've kind of moved the workspace a little bit, but we're just gonna put uh, four truss head screws with some lock washers and flat washers together here. And we're gonna try not to knock anything off of the uh, work surface here, mostly because I don't want it to dent my wood floor. <clears throat> and secondly, because I don't want to scratch the paint. That is a likely scenario. And one more, like this. There we go. All right, good. Uh, where did I put my screwdriver? I'm losing everything today. Hmm. Oh, there it is. Hey, and there's the other screwdriver I was looking for earlier. <sighs> All right. Let's see. Okay. 
T1, army guy. I can respect that to a degree. Always a good, healthy rivalry between the two services. Uh, both my cousins and their parents, well, first off, my, my aunt and uncle were both in the army. Uh, my aunt, she recently retired. She was a, she was a one star actually. She was very successful. And then my uncle, he retired a while ago. Um, he retired at his 20 year point. So I think in, uh, 2006, if I had to remember correctly, uh, he retired and he was a Lieutenant Colonel. And then, uh, their kids, my, my two cousins, um, one of them is at West Point. He graduates next year. And then, uh, my other cousin, She's at Princeton, actually, on an ROTC scholarship, and uh, she's still got three years to go. It's interesting because, you know, I got married in 2004. Uh, well, excuse me. In 1999, when I graduated high school, my cousin was like eight months old. So it's very weird to see, you know, all these years later, um, he is now about to be a second lieutenant in the Army. It's very, it's very... It's funny to me, and it also reminds me I'm getting really old. Okay. What makes me feel even more old is the fact that I've only got three and a half years left and I can retire, uh, and I plan to. <clears throat> okay. All right, so there we go. Uh, internal wiring is done. That looks pretty clean. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, I could probably do a zip tie here, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to forego that. All right, let's flip this bad boy over. Yeah. Um, okay, so the lag question. The Brook board is the fastest board available on the market. There's a reason why I created the Easy Mod. It's to take all that stock stuff out from Hori or Mad Cats or whatever and replace it with a Brook board. Um, it's just faster. It is a lot faster. Um, and no one can touch it. So, yeah, there you go. <clears throat> okay. And let's go ahead and put the bolt top on. All right, that looks pretty sick. I'm very happy with this. All right. Well, we'll just have to make deal with this little weak, wimpy, wimpy flathead. Yes, even my shafts have the nice little cutout in the bottom for your flathead screwdriver. All right, so there we go. Let's go ahead and start peeling some of this junk off. Yes. I'm not going to leave the trash in the stick. Hmm. That looks amazing. Oops. Oh, damn it. Sometimes these little protectors don't want to uh, come off very easily. And they, the little brown paper part gets yanked off, but the little plastic piece stays behind. Oh, just like that one. Yeah, there we go. Boom. Just like that, and that's how uh, that's how it's done right there. Uh, I gotta get to microfiber cloth and clean up. I apparently had some schmutz on my hand. Um, do you, the retro board, no, it's not gonna report. Uh, it will not work with the Genesis, and here's why. Um, the retro board has six pins on the output, two of which are for, or sorry, that's not right. Eight pins on the output, two of which are power and ground. So that leaves you six pins. The Genesis re requires seven. Uh, yeah, seven total pins. So there's one too few. Uh, Broken, when we were go discussing this with Brooke, there was uh, a lot of discussion back and forth on, you know, what the right way to do the output was. And we kind of decided that, hey, let's do it like the PS360 Plus. Because the idea is there's probably a lot of people out there that are going to want to upgrade to a supported PCB. Um, and they already have a bunch of cables for them. So let's just do that. Let's just make that a thing uh, to kind of save everyone a little bit of headache and money. Um, and there's trade-offs for that. I mean, really, you could. You, do you want a board that can do everything? Yes, but at the same time, 
not everyone has or wants a 25 pin connector on the output of their fight stick to make cables to do all that plus the cost associated with manufacturing cables um, we're not dealing the fighting game community is not as big as you'd think um, and while I've sold a number of retro boards um, there is there is uh, the reach is you, we're not selling millions of these things so to make all these special cables it's a considerable investment uh, so we wanted to you know use as much on the off the shelf stuff rather uh, things available uh, which is why we designed things and we recommended things the way we did so uh, I think there might be something coming in the future though that you'll find interesting I may or may not have some things in the works with some very talented people uh, that will let your retro board work on some different things but we're gonna keep that a secret for now because I'm not ready to tell you sorry <laughs> I know that's unsatisfying it would be for me uh, okay all right so uh, let's get this cleaned up and let's plug this bad boy in to uh, the old computer Dora and uh, update the brook board and make sure we're good to go uh, I don't know how many of you guys are arcade people um, uh, but uh, if you are and you're a Naomi person, which arguably one of the greatest arcade systems ever, I finally got these back in stock. These are um, the ATX to Naomi power cables that uh, we've been making these for. We made a bunch of them and sold out. And then the company that I used to make them, uh, they were not being very responsive. So uh, I ended up using another company that didn't work out. I lost a bunch of time and money with them and finally got my new cable manufacturer uh, to make these. And these are so much nicer. Braided cables, got the heat shrink everywhere. Actually, we added the GD-ROM support uh, power too. So here you go. <sighs> Those are now available on the website. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, on them because I'm the fence buying one. Just do it myself with the pie once the retro. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah. The thank you, Ko. These uh, new ones are tight. They are actually. I think they're better. Um, I've done three sets so far, and the third set, this set, well, I guess technically four sets. I can't sell one of the sets because they made them incorrectly. Um, that's a whole other story. Uh, the, um, the second, the first set had just not bare wires, but it was just the wire. Um, they work. They were great. No problems. Required a switch. Uh, intentionally did that. Didn't put the Genie ROM connector on there. Uh, not a lot of people needed it or wanted it or at least I didn't think, and then batch two came out, and I put the sleeving over the entire bu bundle of cables, and it came out okay, it was nice, it was fine, uh, but uh, it wasn't exactly where I kind of envisioned it going, and then these, um, I took a, you know, I took a, tr uh, a trick right out of the custom PC builder market, and I individually sleeved every wire, uh, with the exception of the GD-ROM one, because there's a couple wires here that are soldered in the middle, uh, to break it out to all six pins, you know, for ground and 12 volts. Um, and then uh, it just didn't make sense to do that uh, for this particular case. But these are, and I just think it looks nicer overall. <clears throat> so, all right. Uh, now, back to what we were doing. And I'm going to go ahead and bring this over here. Oh, wait, no. I guess I'm going to have to leave it over here. I just hope my cables are long enough. All right. And a lot of this is going to happen off screen, so you'll just have to listen, I guess. <clears throat> All right. Oh, All right, let me open up the uh, Brook Updater over here. Yeah, the new uh, the new cables also don't require the switch. We actually uh, looped the uh, oh excuse me the um, the uh, appropriate pins together to uh, to remove that requirement.
There we go. I had it locked. All right, so we're just going to update it real quick. Again, off screen, sorry. We'll run uh, joy.cpl to test it all out real quick. And I always like to test it at this point before I button it up, uh, just in case there's a loose wire or something like that. I can just easily fix it real quick and then uh, be on my way. All right, good. It's showing up as a PlayStation, or excuse me, an Xbox One controller. Yep. Yeah, good. We are good to go. We're in the money, if you will. All right. And uh, so, yeah, there you go. That's the build. Call this one sat and done. Go ahead and unplug the cable. And uh, we'll grab the bottom. And again, uh, we did put that uh, bottom pad on it instead of the feet. You could put the feet on it as well if you wanted to. But uh, I don't think it's necessary when you uh, use the bottom pad. So let's go ahead and uh, put this back together, or together rather, and we'll call this build done. Uh, it shows up as an Xbox One controller in Windows 10. Which is actually kind of nice because when you hit the home button, it brings up like a whole menu thing. And um, it used to bring up Game Center. I never used Game Center. I don't know if Windows update through uh, something else and in, but it opens up. Uh, what is it opening up? I never really paid attention. I'm like, yep, works, move. And they hit it again and it goes away. Alright, well, next stop is going to be uh, just a quick hit with the microfiber cloth and some Windex just to get rid of some of my grubby paw prints off of it, and then in the photo booth, which is probably good because I actually have a number of things that uh, I do need to take pictures of, including the new uh, uh, crown levers that I got right before I went on vacation to Thailand that I never took pictures of or listed, um, and I guess I could show you these guys. Why not? So, we, uh, you know, you guys know I've been making replacement panels for fight sticks for a long time. Uh, one of my most popular fight stick panel replacements has actually been for the Hori Wrap N. Um, and a couple months ago, it was like six months ago, I guess, um, I started toying with the idea of some aluminum overlays for them. And so this is one that we came up with. Um, I've had them for a good couple of months and uh, I just haven't listed them or anything like that. This is uh, brushed aluminum with an orange finish. It fits on top of our steel panels. Um, so the aluminum can be very thin and uh, uh, just sit on top and you know have a nice sturdy finish or sturdy bottom plate in steel with a nice aluminum overlay. And again, because we're trying it out and we were doing, you know, some new stuff with some new aluminum. We did, uh, you know, orange. Then we did, we obviously, you got to go with silver aluminum. You know, brushed aluminum and silver. Uh, let's see what else we got. Okay. Then uh, blue, right? You can't have orange without blue, obviously. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, these are kind of cold. Um, we got like a black gunmetal. That's pretty sweet. Uh, and then we also have uh, rose gold. There you go. It's kind of hard to see with the light on it, but it's more of like a rose gold. And so, yeah, these are just real thin aluminum overlays that sit on top of uh, the steel the steel panels. Um, they came out very nice. My only concern is that it does protrude up a little bit above the stock. Uh, panel because when I made well this the panel that I put in because when I made the panels uh, I wanted to make them as thick as possible to avoid having a gap so there's a little little edge here I don't think it's too bad um, but these have been sitting in my oh my god they've been sitting here for like 
five months now, and I think my wife is about ready to murder me because uh, they're on my dining room table and they've been there for a while. So I'll probably list these up for like, I don't know, like 10 bucks maybe, uh, just because they're pr prototypes, they're not production ready. Uh, they're fine, they work great, they look great. Um, uh, you can't use them without my steel panel, of course, but uh, that's just because of uh, how thin they are. Um, but uh, yeah, so it'd be really cool uh, to get out there and, you know, maybe, you know, if they take off, you know, I've got some other prototypes for different sticks of the same st uh, steam aluminum construction and kind of idea behind them um, that uh, are sitting in other places in my house that uh, I may also list up as well. But um, uh, yeah, we've been working on stuff like all this stuff for a long time. And again, just being a one man show limits how fast you can put out some of your new projects and stuff like that. And you know, some things take a backseat to other things. And um, unfortunately, the unexpected move in September kind of put a lot of things on the back burner, including this. I mean, it's been sitting here, God, since July. Um, probably one of my best kept secrets ever. Uh, so we'll probably be listing these up for the on the website here shortly too. Uh, again, just an inexpensive uh, overlay to dress up your uh, Hori Wrap end that has the the um, the uh, hitbox panel that I make on it. So yeah, pretty exciting. And you guys are the first ones to see those. I haven't showed those to anybody yet. So, who yeah. All right, so all I'm doing now is I'm just buttoning this up, uh, putting putting the last case screws in, just to call this a day. Yeah, the uh, lots of good options with um, with those uh, aluminum panels, and uh, I may actually bring one to work and you know laser etch on it something. I don't know. I mean, I can, might as well. It's not something I could do production wise. Not until I get back to the states and actually set my own laser up which I'm fully intending on doing because frankly there's just way too many things in plexi that I want to cut uh, that I want to do now um, so yeah and when I get back to the States I'm going to be setting up my aquarium again and uh, there are just so many things in acrylic that I want to cut and make for my saltwater aquarium that uh, it just makes sense to get one I mean you might as well so uh, all right, so here you guys go, the finished product. Uh, fortunately, you can't see it, but there are some smudges down here from, from just like grease and oils on my hand that I got to clean up. But uh, I think this came out pretty good. I'm very happy with it. You got the Pro Cable Kit in there. You got the, uh, the 24 millimeter Sanduxas. Uh, same thing with the 24s. You got the JLF with the nice red. And um, the good thing is, is the red on the ball top from the San Juan matches the... Uh, the Sam Ducks is very good, very well, so I'm very happy with that. Uh, printed Plexi artwork, uh, again, we do have a printed Plexi run open right now. Uh, so if you've been looking to upgrade your game and get some printed Plexi for either your Panzer or any of your Mad Cat sticks that use that 1 inch Plexi overlays, now's the time to do it because we're running that right now. Uh, so we've already got about five or six orders in. Uh, so yeah, get those orders in and that'd be great. Uh, let's see, silver or black. Yeah, no, I think I think with those different colors, those uh, aluminum overlays, they're gonna do all sorts of good stuff with those. And the nice thing is, is because they're nice thin overlays, it hides mounting hardware and stuff like that. You don't need any little special things to cover up hardware or anything like that. So I'm very excited about them. Um, like I said, those are the prototypes. They've been sitting there and kind of got put on the back burner for a while, uh, just as you know, life happened. And uh, there's going to be some things I'm going to do with maybe Rev 2.0. Um, but they'll be coming out, and I hope to maybe expand it out to some other sticks as well. So I uh, hope you guys like those. Uh, okay, well, I think uh, that's going to do it for me today. I appreciate you guys tuning in. i got to go take some photos, obviously, and uh, list this bad boy up for sale on my website. Um, so, yeah, I appreciate it, guys. I'll catch you all later. And uh, drop me a line on Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, etc. And uh, take a look on my Twitter page. My Discord server's up. Please join it. Happy to have you there. And uh, we can talk tech and fight sticks and all that good stuff. Until next time, I'll catch you later. Peace.